Good morning, everyone. Morning. How is? Morning, good. Morning. So we see a lot of new faces today. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us. We know Sundays are very precious. Um, just a quick recap of what we do uh, at the Angels Wing is that we feature um, independent artist art. And the reason why I started it is, is because um, I realized that as an independent artist, it's really difficult to get your art showcase to the world, right? I mean, every one of us is on Twitter. You see all the hype and all the shilling. It's all mainly the, the uh, PFP projects the 10K uh, PFP projects. And I wanted to have a, a gallery which showcased and helped independent artists who didn't have a full uh, marketing team behind them to try to get more visibility for their work. And I would like to say that with the help of my very gracious uh, co-hosts here, Yoon, Espresso, and uh, Johannes, who couldn't join us today, um, it's been pretty successful. Um, we've seen art fly off the walls. We've seen people visiting us. I think we have uh, more than a thousand visits in less than two months. So we hope that our community just keeps growing. And thank you very much for joining us. And we hope that you'll join us as part of the community. So we do hold these uh, regular kind of spaces on a weekly basis. And uh, we take this as a very cozy fireside chat. We're not too concerned that we don't have like millions of people joining. It's all recorded, so do feel free to, to listen back in uh, if, if you do miss one. Okay, I think, I hope it didn't take up too much time, Espresso. That's great, thank you. No, no, that, that was good. Um, and um, we will pin a tweet also that uh, it makes it easy to find the gallery um, at some point now, but I think um, we want to get, go ahead and Welcome our uh, special guest of the day, Ali. Um, she's been joining the uh, gallery recently, and uh, we invited her here today to to introduce herself and her project. And and yeah, uh, excited to learn more about about the hundred day project. So, Ali, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure, I'm a little bit nervous, so just kind of bear with me. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever been on a Spaces as like somebody talking about myself and like what I'm doing, so just bear with me. <laughs> yes, yes, um, no, no problem. We're, it's uh, early for all of us. Like, yeah, we've been only doing these Spaces for a few times already, so so yeah, no worries. Okay, awesome. So first, I just want to say thank you, um, everyone, so much for having me up here. It's I love talking about my artwork when I do get the chance. Um, also, just wanted to say that a thousand visits in less than two months, two months to the Angels Wing um, Gallery, like that's amazing because um, I've had some of my work shown in like local little galleries, like in my hometown, and I feel like maybe total, you know, in one type of month maybe they'll get a couple hundred people so like it's really cool what you guys are doing to um and gals and folks to uh showcase independent artists because there's that kind of visibility that you know independent artists might not get even in their home community so that's really cool um yeah so keep doing what you're doing um so my name is ali and i am doing um like espresso said the 100 day project and there's kind of two parts of the project. So the first part is um, I created a series of one-on-one, -on one of one uh, PFP art, um, which is what's hanging currently now in the gallery in the West Wing. And it is um, a myriad of different, it's, be, it's I call it the 100 girl collection. Um, and so each girl corresponds to a different day. And this was, a project that I did because I really enjoy basically I've been drawing girls in some form or another with this kind of style probably like most of my life <laughs> I'm in my early 30s now and like um I just have so many notebooks full of like the same type of style of art and I just really thought it'd be cool to um take that style and also kind of expand it and do some cool things and make it into like a one-of-one one, uh, Genesis collection. 
And then part of that too is, so that's the 100 day girl collection. And so what I'm actually doing on Twitter, I kind of see it as a, (laughs) bear with me, I kind of see it as like a performance art piece in a sense, where I am uh, documenting my process of creating a 10K generative collection every day. So basically what that means for me is that every day I will um, post a list every day of what I'm doing that day to keep me accountable and also gives people kind of like a peek in to what the life of a one of like um, an NFT creator is because I think a lot of the time we see these projects just kind of like pop up um, and we don't really know about all the work that goes behind it. And I'm just like one person doing this. So a lot of it is um, trial and error and just kind of, I kind of feel like I do like a half start or something. Like I'm like, ooh, maybe I'll start on TikTok. And then I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. So it's a lot of um, the that process. I'm trying to um, show that process so that, I don't know, just so like it's more appreciated because I, I just absolutely love um process and process documentation and things like that in art so I thought it'd be cool to document um that process so part of the way that the 100 girl 100 day collection kind of fits in with the 10k pfp collection is I kind of see it as um in one ways it's like a fundraiser to like help me with the 10k collection um but also I kind of see it as um a Genesis collection. So there's a lot of elements from that hundred days that I am pulling into um, the collection, like uh, the bigger collection. So like outfits or like hairstyles. I love hairstyles. So, and all, um, yeah, so that's kind of, <laughs> I'm rambling a little bit, but that's um, kind of a nutshell. I'm not sure I really encapsulated that super clearly. So if you have any questions or clarity questions, I would absolutely love to hear them. So. <laughs> no, Ali, I think you're doing really well. Um, just for everyone's um, convenience, I've pinned the tweet uh, on the pinned tweets uh, section so you can have a look at, I believe these are the uh, one ones, right, Ali? Yep. The, uh, the, 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 ones that are, the ones that are hung up on the wall. And so what you're saying is that on top of these one ones, you will have a uh, 10K generative collection. W- would it be accurate to say that they would kind of look similar to these or are they entirely different? So that's a very good question. So I'm actually currently trying to decide, like, I think, for example, like the rainbow hair that you can kind of see in that um, uh, pin tweet, like I am going to be doing, the, I'm, I'm going to be taking a hairstyle similar to that rainbow hair. It might not be the exactly the same. So like, it's going to look similar, but it's not going to look identical, I guess, if that makes sense. Because I do, these are very special to me, the one of ones. And I did put a lot of time in, so like, I'm not going to take them, you know, exactly, but they should look similar, if that makes sense. Yeah, uh, can hardly wait to see your your generative collection. I mean, it's quite an admirable effort, I think, to be able to do it in 100 days. To be real honest, we have kind of toyed with the idea ourselves of coming up with some some NFTs, maybe. Secret alpha drop here, guys. I'm not even sure how to where to start. How, how do you even get started? That's my first question on the technical details, like the different layers, the different attributes. Could you just give us a little bit of insight into your journey on that? Um, absolutely. So basically, um, the way I've kind of broken up the 100 days is like the first 25 days with a lot of research and planning and just kind of like seeing what's out there and um I kind of have a I took a look of tools so it's interesting because building a generative collection there's a lot that obviously there's a lot that goes into it but um there's a lot from an art perspective but also from a technical perspective and as someone who's definitely more art focused um part of the first 25 days was I was researching ways that um if I absolutely could not figure out any kind of coding, um, is there like an out of the in the, um, all in one option that I could kind of go to as a last resort to do the kind of coding? Um, but for the generative art piece, um, 
basically, no, let's start from the very beginning. So <laughs> when I was making the collection, um, one of the first things they looked at was um, the size of the actual uh, screen. So like what size do you want your um, NFT to be? Because some collections, um, like the punk, crypto punks, like those are like really, really small and they're very pixelated. Um, but then you have something like the world of women and even uh, meta angels, which I think is 4k by 4k pixels. Like, so, um, like a canvas size, that's quite big. So for me, I, the first step for me was really researching, okay, well, how big do I want to make the the canvas? Because that is the very start. Um, and then the next, uh, stage, I kind of decided that I'm going to start with the biggest size I can, my iPad can manage. And then once I kind of have my, so, sorry, I'm going to start with the biggest size my iPad can manage, which is the 4K by 4K size. And then if it makes sense or if it becomes too cumbersome when I'm doing some of the generative art, I'll just, um, like, size the art pieces down, basically. Um, so, like, my next step for me was then I wanted to look at, um, a co- so I think one of the problems a lot of uh, generative collections have is that they don't spend enough time looking at the visual impact of their PFPs, if that's what they're going to be used for. Um, I think a lot of these days, like, you can make beautiful art NFTs as well, but um, for me, I'm kind of thinking about this as, like, um, I like to call it art to market. So basically, I'm trying to make art that is both um, art that I'm happy with as myself as an artist, but also something that somebody might want to buy. Because I think also as artists, um, I make a lot of crazy things um, that aren't necessarily marketable. So for me, I'm trying to kind of have a balance of art that is something that somebody actually wants. And in this market lately, I'm the, it's the PFP. So that's kind of why I chose to go down that route for the generative collection. Um, so we have the canvas size. And then... I'm looking at the visual impact of the PFP. So um, basically, like, I did a lot of research on, like, how does something look when you crop it down into that little tiny uh, profile pic size on Twitter or on Discord? So, like, where is the art going to be seen and how to make it the most um, visually impactful that I can? Um, I'm not sure I've fully, you know, cracked the code on that. Um, So... I've been testing a lot of like basically doing a lot of just random sketches of like what I would like the PFP to look like and then testing it. Um, sorry, not sketches of what I'd like the art to look like and uh, testing that in the different colors um, as like little PFP. So this is actually a test. Um, my PFP right now is actually one of the ones that I'm testing. Um, so visually I don't necessarily like the background in this one. So I might, um, either not have this color or like when I am generating the NFTs, I might make sure that this color doesn't, um, you know, come up with this hairstyle, for example, because I don't think it has a good uh, visual impact. Um, So now I kind of had a lot of that stuff sort of sorted out and I did a little bit of research into um, traits as well. So, um, and also uh, research into how, um, what the actual drawing of a PFP collection, like what it actually looks like. So for example, like if we just kind of scroll through here, like a lot of these are just um, kind of like, uh, like a portrait, like a full on face portrait. Um, Other PFPs, they kind of have the like three quarter face looking right or three quarter face looking left. Um, And then some also have like just straight profile, either looking left or right. so this is just kind of for me i'm not the best artist with a three-quarter view um or with profile so i was like you know i'm just gonna go with the straight um like the profile kind of look here like what a lot of these have so you know i was trying to play to my strengths there a little bit um and then so kind of when i got like so i've got the canvas sorted out i kind of have an idea of what i want the style to look like i've kind of played with it a little bit I also have an idea of how I want the um, character to, like, the base character. So, like, they're going to be looking forward, not, like, left or right. So that's kind of the very basics. Um, 
and then now I kind I'm kind of moving into the more like fun creative side where I'm actually um basically I'm just making a bunch of traits so basically um sorry I'm gonna go back so something else that um I did a little bit of research on was how many the number of traits that are in a collection so for example like uh, how do I put this so like you have the hair that's one trait um if I'm looking at my PFP right now it's like the cat ears that's another trait um skin color that's a trait face t-shirt etc so these are the little pieces that'll get mixed up when you do the generative p part of the um pfp creation so typically um i looked at a few different collections from like world of women to like board apes like doodle like kind of like the bigger ones and generally they don't tend to have that many or that fee they tend to have anywhere between like seven to nine actual traits which are the things that kind of get like mixed up um so like they'll have like hair hat t-shirt different things but it usually doesn't um it's not it's usually less than 10. um and i, think uh, I guess also, that i guess that kind yeah. of feeds into your point about uh having to make it make sure all of them look kind of coherent right you can't have too many because then you have to go through a huge number of permutations yes absolutely and i think it also um I think if it's, I think I prefer myself like a bit of a more, not a minimalist style, but just a style that is I, visually cohesive, I guess is like this, what I would call it. Um, and I think there's some traits, some um, collections that do have a bit more of a, maybe like a cluttered look and it kind of works for them. Like I'm thinking like a 90s babes, like they have a lot of like stuff going on. Um, it kind of works for them. But for me, I was like, I kind of <laughs> tried to do what I like. So <laughs> I think that's um, also kind of what I was talking about earlier with like the art to market aspect where like, I want to do something that's true to me as an artist, but also something that someone else might want to buy someday, who knows. Um, so yeah, right now I'm actually in a lot of the treat art creation generation, um, that type of stuff, which basically uh, looks like a lot of drawing, a lot of testing. Um, I'm, actually trying to pull a lot of my um traits themselves from my old childhood drawings so i'm like <laughs> just kind of like taking a stack of like old notebooks and like photographing them and being like oh this hairstyle might be cool on a pfp i think just for fun and also i'm like you know i've already done all these drawings so i might as well try and use them for something yeah that's so great uh, to be able to to reuse work and not have to start from scratch. And But looking at uh, the uh, 100 Girls collection, there's so much variety in, in this. And we also have that illustrated with the four uh, in the gallery, as you can see in this pin tweet as well. There's, there's lo lots of different styles. Um, and do you have any uh, thoughts on how many of these will go into the generative collection? Or um, if you want to distinguish some of them maybe yeah so i think i'm not going to take all of the traits or all of the things from the 100 day girl collection and especially the ones that are very um unique um like i'm thinking about the one with the girl with the stars in her hair like i'm not going to do something um that's exactly like that and i've already kind of um also picked my skin tones i guess so it's going to be more of a um like a matte style so not as much of the sort of the gradients and um a lot of the i kind of see the 100 girl collection as a as a bit of experimentation so there's some pieces in there that are very um i don't know different like there's some that are more like sketchy and i kind of uh, blended the colors a little bit um and others are just um kind of at the far end of that so more kind of a traditional so basically i don't i I don't want to recreate exactly what's up there, but um, like, for example, I am going to have a rainbow hair that's like the one that's pinned, but it's not going to be the same hair shape, if that makes sense. So kind yeah. of using similar elements, but not not copying from myself. Yeah, yeah that, that makes sense. And uh, do you already know that, uh, whether some of these traits will be more work than, than others? And the reason for asking is that I remember 
uh, Sarana's comment about building the Meta Angels collection, how the wings uh, were kind of the <laughs> almost too much work. Like there are 87 different wings in the Meta Angels collection, which is a lot. <laughs> so do you have any, any traits that are like that? I think where I'm going to run into trouble, I can already see it happening, is with the hair. Um, so not necessarily that the hair is going to be like difficult to draw or anything. It's more so like how the hair is going to fit with like the face features. Um, so like, for example, I have one that like, it has hair kind of covering the eyes and I'll have to kind of make sure that I have the, that one with the hair covering the eyes. Like I don't have like really distinctive eyes <laughs> that are hidden underneath the like bangs. Um, so I think that's kind of where I'm going to run into trouble the most. Um, yes, but nothing as gorgeous as like, and beautiful, elite, intricate as those wings. Like also espresso. <laughs> um, like I'm actually a meta angel lender, so Espresso let me one of his angels, and um, the one that I have borrowed is like it has these beautiful like flower wings, and it's just it's truly spectacular. Um, even in just like a small little uh, PFP form as well, like it's just gorgeous. Um, but no, I think I <laughs> I tried to stay away from anything that would be too difficult. Um, I did have some like initial ideas of doing more like um, almost like a cyberpunk type thing. Like that was my initial thought for the collection, like random eye pieces and things like that. But like when you're doing the layers, those kind of, you have to be really careful, I guess. Like if you're going to be layering things on top of other things, like even right now, like the cat ears, like I'm not sure I'm going to keep them because they're a bit, they don't work with every hairstyle. So I think, my problem is like my hair. So <laughs> I have a lot of different hairstyles. Also, just like drawing hair, um, generally. So it'll be, it'll be like two hundred hairstyles in like two t-shirts, but hopefully not. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can see how that's a lot of work making the hair hair work with, with the eyes and with uh, any kind of additional traits. Um, so um, also wanted to very curious about the process and. I uh, wanted to ask, uh, first of all, what kind of uh, tools are you using to make both this 100 gold collection and, and the generative one? That is a very good question. Um, so I'm currently using, um, I'm using an iPad Pro with an Apple, a second generation Apple Pencil that kind of clips into the side. So a lot of the initial, um, a lot of the work that I'm creating the traits and everything is going to be in Procreate um, using kind of like their, well, I've kind of jazzed up the brushes a little bit, but not, nothing too crazy, just kind of like this typical um, brushes and um, in Procreate. And then once I've kind of made all of the traits, I'm going to, so basically it, I'm making it on my iPad, I'm using the app Procreate. And so in Procreate, I'm kind of using it to um, get a general, like draw the traits basically first. Um, I'm also using it to create layers of traits. So on my iPad right now, I probably have like five or six different um, files. And then in each file is like where I'm working on the different trait. Um, so like in one, I'm doing like t-shirts and like clothing and then like the other, I'm doing like hair and then the other, I'm doing like skin tone and things like that. Um, so once I kind of have those like all done or as much as I like, I will take the files and move into Photoshop where I will use, I think I'm going to be using Nifty Generator to start. Um, we're, we're basically, um... So basically, once you go to Photoshop, you kind of like take the layered files and you, um, I believe, I haven't done a ton of research into this yet, but you basically export them as PNGs and um, you um, basically like transparent, transparent little files. So like, for example, like I have like a skull t-shirt, so like the skull t-shirt will be on one layer and then the other layer will be the striped t-shirt and the tank top. So that'll all kind of get um, exported one by one. And then that will go into a, um, a folder 
And then, so there'll be like a hair folder, a t-shirt folder, a face folder, a skin folder. Um, and then I'm going to be using something like Nifty Generator, which I believe you put in like what your things are, like hairstyles and things like that. And then it will um, actually run through the file, the folders that you have with the PNGs and like grab random ones and uh, make the PFPs themselves. So um, that will be an interesting process because currently um, I am using a broken, <laughs> my MacBook, I dropped it not too long ago. So not too, too long ago, but like maybe about a year ago, I dropped it and there's like a big uh, crack in the screen. So that's part of the reason actually also <laughs> why I'm trying to fundraise for the collection. Eventually when I get there, um, I have a couple friends and there's like a local um, artist run center that I can probably go and use some other like um, higher quality machines. So hopefully I'll be able to run through all of the uh, PNGs and like actually create the images. Um, and then I believe they get uploaded through like a smart contract, but um, onto like OpenSea or I haven't quite done <laughs> into the tech part which is why I have like a backup solution um, if that doesn't go so well. Um, but for the PFP, like the 100 girl collection, basically that was all done in Procreate and each image is like a bunch of different layers. And it was, it wasn't as um, like prescribed as the stuff I'm doing with the generative collection. So it was just nice to like draw some hair and then be like, Ooh, maybe this like stars would look nice in the hair and things like that. So it was really fun to kind of like more playful and um, not necessarily more creative, but I had a lot of fun doing it. Whereas this is a bit more like, like also like got my analytical side going where I'm like, okay, so this hair can't overlap with this. And then like when I take this out, it probably shouldn't be like a pure white because I don't know if that's going to be see-through when, <laughs> when it's a PNG, which is like a, usually the white is transparent in a PNG file. So I'm like, I have to think about a couple of things a little bit more. Yeah, so that's generally um, the process. I know some artists, they also take the art, um, they kind of use Procreate as like the initial sketch, and then they'll go into something like um, Adobe Illustrator and then make it either like a vector file or they'll add like some really nice gradients, which Procreate doesn't really have that, but it is, it's like another different way to kind of jazz up the artwork. You can uh, bring it into Photoshop or into um, Adobe Illustrator. Yeah, and we have lots of people who, who use Procreate uh, and mention that. So that's, that's certainly a, an app that's uh, a lot uh, in use in, in, yeah, by artists making NFTs. So, and this Nifty Generator is interesting. I'm, I actually haven't seen that one before, so uh, that's great. And it seems like you can you can make all the layers, as you said, and, and upload them, and they will take care of generating the variations. So that's uh, a lot of uh, work uh, taken off the, your plate, right? Yes, and there are, like, so something that I've noticed through, like, this whole process is, like, there's, there's um, a range. So at the far end of the range where it's very technical, you could do something like, um, I think it's called the hash lips art generator, which when I first looked at it, it's a bit more um, technical looking. So I didn't, I was like, I'm not sure if I'll have enough time to get to this, but I can do it. Um, and then I think Nifty generator is more in the middle. I've seen a lot of people use that who um, say it doesn't take a lot of coding and kind of what I looked at um, it doesn't seem too difficult. And then like on the far end, um, where it's like an all in one option, I'm going to be testing something called, I think it's, I'm really Bueno or Buevo um, NFT generator. So it is a service you have to pay for, whereas I believe the other two are free or cheap, but it will also help you um, generate your images in a code free way. Um, and I think they may also help you with the, like con uh, smart contract aspect, like up actually uploading your art to um, like a marketplace or like a mint website. So that's kind of my last hope if I can't figure out Nifty Generator and the other one. Um, but it's nice that there's more options. And um, but it does a little daunting too to like do things like this on your own. So that I think that's, I kind of feel like when I'm posting my little list every day that like, 
I don't know, like, everybody's helping me. <laughs> Not really helping me, but there's, like, I don't know. People are just out there, and it's, like, nice instead of, like, doing it all by myself because, like, I think as us as artists, like, we don't really have a team, and because art has typically been, like, undervalued at least in the last, like, I don't know, 10 or 20 years, maybe even way before that, like, we don't actually have deep pockets to, like, go and, like, hire big teams or anything like that, so it's really nice to, like, try and do something as much as you can on your own. And, like, I know it's, obviously, it's not going to be as perfect as if I had, like, I don't know, 10 Ethereum to, like, really launch the project. But it's an experiment, so it's 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 fun. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And um, so one follow-up question is, have you thought anything about kind of what it will be like after launching this generative collection? Do you have any thoughts or plans for how to get it out there or, or is that way too early? No, so that's a great question. Um, so after the 100 day um, collection is completed, um, I'm going to be spending more time on sort of building my, I'm going to use some air quotes, but you can't see them, brand, <laughs> um, which is um, basically the idea of the brand that I want to create after the 100-day project, which is what the PFP collection is going to be about, is um, it's called, <clears throat> excuse me, New Found Friends. Um, and basically the idea is that um, I want to, I want the art to mean something, um, but also as myself, like I'm coming, I guess the meaning kind of like behind my collection, like the generative collection as well is like, I'm not a full-time artist and actually like when I was a child I was actually discouraged from pursuing arts as a career and um wait Ellie you're not a full-time artist and you're doing all this oh my goodness I'm sorry I just had to interrupt to say that <laughs> yeah no I have a full-time job uh right now which is uh sometimes um don't don't wrap me out guys <laughs> but sometimes I do like um I tweet during the day when I should be working or like I take a break and I'm like on Twitter, but no, I'm I'm not um a full time artist. I'm not full time in uh, Web three, so I do have like a regular full time uh, job. And um, so basically, like when I was younger, I was really good at art, and I really loved drawing. And I drew all these girls, and you know, I just had like notebooks and notebooks full of like sketches and like outfit ideas and like all these cool things. And then I was also really good, though, at, like, a lot of other things, like, like, science and math and, like, um, language arts. So kind of around the high school age, which in Canada is when you kind of have to, like, quote, unquote, decide what you want to do with your life. Um, I was really kind of encouraged to not pursue art and to go a different uh, direction. I, I did media, multimedia, which was, like um, like, video editing, and that was kind of the most arty that I got. Um, I also did English, like, communication, so, like, writing essays and that type of thing. And then, basically, after I graduated, I spent a lot of time kind of dabbling in art, but not really being the full artist that I know I could be and that I want to be. And then, so, being someone who is, like, an amateur coming at this, like, there's a lot of things that people who have a classic art background that they just know or that they just like know how to do or that they learn through like you know a life drawing course they learned like how to draw faces better or like because their art was encouraged more they drew more and they were like kind of really got those skills honed so I'm part of what I want to do is like newfound friends and like the kind of brand I guess that I want to create after this is to really um offer like art education and like art tools for as many people as possible so like with me after I'm kind of done this process um I'm gonna like really try and write up a really robust like um tutorial on like how to or how I launched a collection like how you could do it too um and then also either just even if I don't make the resources like finding resources for people on like how to do art because I really think that I feel like there's a lot of people who want to be artists but 
they're not artists right now. Like they're doing something else, and they don't necessarily know all the things um, to be an artist, or like those little technical things, or even like things like oh, you should probably draw every day. Like there's just so many different things that you miss out on as part of like an arts education, um, and like even like an art life that you don't necessarily get um, if you pursue something else. So that's kind of the rough edges of what I hope to accomplish in like my other brand thing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's so great to hear. Uh, it's it also aligns very well with what we're trying to do here with Angel Swing, uh, trying to help people and help artists in this space. It's um, there is a lot to learn, right? Uh, and uh, and a lot uh, of decisions to make when uh, trying to make art and put it online. And and uh, yeah, anything and everything we can do to to help people uh, get uh, going on this journey uh, is very valuable. I feel. And um, we have also a question from uh, from the audience from via Discord. Um, question sure. of um, what artists or art uh, are you inspired by? Um, this is a good question. Um, I was actually nervous. I was like, wait, this is a fireside chat. Am I going to have to like <laughs> come up with like my 10 point plan, my roadmap? But okay, this is a good question. Um, so I would say I'm definitely inspired. Um, um, I think his name is Adrian Tomin. He is um, a graphic novelist who does a lot of sort of like matte two-tone graphic novels. Um, I believe he's Canadian. Um, I just really love his work and um, stuff like that. I'm also very inspired. Um, one of my favorite artists is um, also Andy Warhol. And I feel like everyone likes Andy Warhol, but like I was a little bit obsessed with him when I was growing up and I like bought his like journals. And, like, I read all the journal pages and, like, basically he, like, called his accountant every day for, like, a few years and would, like, tell him about his expenses. And I, I guess that kind of fits with, like, why I like process. I like kind of peering into um, the world of an artist and, like, seeing, like, the real nitty-gritty. So, like, he's, he would basically like call and be like, I spent $2.55 on a paintbrush today and... It was just very interesting. I really liked um, reading and learning about um, his life and uh, things like that. I also really like, I'm probably not going to say this right, um, I believe it's Yao Kusama. And she does a lot of work with like dots. And um, she also does um, installation art, which has been like, I think it's been touring for the past couple of years where it's very beautiful. And you go into like little rooms and look at these like, lights everywhere and it's very cool um i actually got to see the exhibit um when it came to a local city near me um but one of the reasons i really like her and why i'm really inspired by her art in general is that um she is i believe she's getting up there in age almost like 80s um but she basically said she's gonna make art every day until she dies so for her art is a calling and it's something that um even like regardless of what is going on like if she's like exhibiting or touring or whatever she always tries to like make time to do art every day which i believe is like i find that incredibly inspiring so i would say like she's one of my um influences as well thank you yeah um and uh, a slightly different question is um if you can tell us a bit more about the process, like, um, first of all, um, really blown away by the fact that you're not doing this on full time. I was, I was convinced this was a full time project for a hundred days. Um, so that's, that's really impressive. And, um, yeah, especially, I think, I think we need to, we need to kick our project up a notch since, uh, now, now we know that you can do things not even being full time. Yeah. Can't use that excuse anymore. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I don't want to show anybody up. I'm a little bit. I don't have a life outside of this. Yeah, no. Uh, um, I wanted to ask about these uh, Twitter updates that you're making every day um, with uh, the notebook, which I find really fascinating. Um, 
seeing how you structure uh, the work and and how you uh, take off stuff. So, what uh, what's the thinking behind? Uh, first of all, uh, the structure you've made in um, uh, for your data work and also the thinking behind sharing it. It's a good question. Um, so I'm kind of um, I'm a type A person, I guess. Um, so even like I, which you know gets me into trouble sometimes because I'm, I can be a perfectionist at times. Um, excuse me. Um, but part of the reason I wanted to do a list every day is because for me it's a sense of accountability. I'm just a single person doing this. Um, I mean, I've seen myself do other art projects in the past where I've had like every best intention of doing it. Um, but I find like for myself, I need a little bit of accountability, whether that's like texting somebody or like texting a friend that I'm gonna like gonna go for a walk or something. Um, but I really wanted to have that accountability um, on Twitter and post it every day um, for myself mainly. Um, Secondly, I think it's an interesting uh, peer into like the life of the project and like what I'm doing day to day. And I also feel like I don't necessarily have the time to like explain exactly what I'm doing every day, but at least you can kind of see what I'm doing every day um, on the list. And um, I decided kind of right at the beginning to structure it as um, both having like a list for my project and for habits. Um, a little lately, I I haven't been doing a really good job with my habits, but, but, um, the habits are really, um, this is kind of like, because I'm, I'm not doing this full time and I'm like, I can kind of burn myself out. Um, the habits are really things that, um, I've kind of learned through trial and error or like a baseline for me. So like, I basically need to do all of these things to kind of meet my own personal needs. Um, so let's say drinking water, doing a little bit of like, cleaning so things don't get hectic doing a little bit of reading um so i really wanted to build that in because i knew if i didn't put it on the list um it would just be like a list of 10 things i want to do that day for the project <laughs> um which i might not have got as many done um so also it's just really that part is really for me and like my um what i need to do every day to be like a human in the world also one of the reasons i made a decision kind of early on that and this kind of also ties back into the artwork as well. Um, and I'm not sure it's going to be a decision that like plays off very well. So who knows? I made a decision to draw or so sharing the notebooks instead of um, actually like typing it out and like posting it online. And, um, you know, like I take a screenshot like from my notes app. I made the decision right away because I really wanted people to see me like as a person. Um, cause I think on Twitter, a lot of the times we don't really, I mean, we're all like little PFP characters or some people have their pictures, but really seeing my handwriting every day. And like, I really feel like that is, it's like a part of me. So when people see the writing, it's like something that I did myself like that day. So I kind of wanted to build a bit of a personal connection, um, with that aspect. And then I've kind of carried that through to the art as well, um, so this is something that I really struggled with and I still kind of struggle with as well, but um, I made the decision not to have perfect lines in my artwork. And I know this might seem like a bit of a like weird <laughs> choice, but especially like if you look at the PFP collection and the um, 100 Day Girl collection, for example, like if you look at them, like the lines might be good, but if you look at some others, there's like, a, the lines are wobbly basically and that is a conscious well two decisions one I don't like the way that the lines look when they're not wobbly and two for me that's another way of putting a little bit of myself into the artwork um is by having those lines that aren't necessarily um perfect so for me that was like really important as an artist like actually show a little bit of imperfection and then to show that like I actually drew this um, and like with these uh, lists, like I actually wrote them. So for me, that's kind of like, I mean, again, like I did kind of say before, like I'm kind of going for a nice cleaner aesthetic. So I'm not sure people are going to look at them and be like, oh, these don't look so good um, with the lines. But it's important to have a, for me to have a bit of, um, I think like wabi-sabi, like a little bit of um, imperfection 
in them as well. Also, it helps me because I'm a perfectionist. So, like, if the lines don't have to be perfect, it makes things easier for me. Yeah, there's something inspiring as well. And I also love that um, the fact that you're sharing the progress on Twitter also makes it easier to understand uh, how the project is coming to life and, and how, after the fact, how it came to life. Uh, which, uh, at least to me, as a, a collector primarily, is a big part of understanding kind of the, the history behind the work. So I um, wouldn't go ahead and, and collect uh, something without first researching um, who's the artist, uh, how did they make this, what, what's kind of the, the history behind it. So very inspiring to see this, this approach and um, urging uh, more artists to share about their, their process because it's uh, super interesting and, and very inspiring. Yeah, I just wanted to add as well that, wow, I mean, Ali, you're truly an inspiration. You're part-time, you're working with a broken MacBook, and you're still churning out things day by day. Um, we do have a question on Discord, actually, about, uh, sure. on a related note, how, how, how do you keep yourself going? I mean, I'm sure there are days where you look you look at all these roadblocks and challenges ahead of you and you're like, is this too much for me? How, how do you just keep keep yourself going? That's a very good question. Um, actually, <laughs> I had a bad weekend with like my project. Like, I haven't really been doing a lot because um, coincidentally, um, I also put in an offer to buy a house uh, this past week. So like... Okay, you can't afford a house, but you can't afford a MacBook. So I have um Okay, I'm sorry, that was just a, a little bit of a joke. Yeah, you don't have to share oh. if you, if it's too private, it's fine. I'm getting help to buy a house. Um yeah, no, uh, <laughs> Casper needs to remember that houses are bought with with uh, imaginary money, right? You never see the money that goes into a house. So, <laughs> so yeah, so just you know, going back to the house, part of this project too is like I am in a, I am married. Um, and something that's very important to me is like not making sure that like any money that goes into the project is not money that goes out of my family life. Um, so for me, yes, like we are, we've saved for like several years to try and buy a house. And like I did at one point, I was like, Ooh, you know, I could just pull like this much money and like, it would be great. I could do this very easily. Um, I chose not to also because I'm very paranoid of like bankrupting my family through NFTs, like it out of the way. It's like a worry of mine. Um, so I try to be very careful with like my balance of like my IRL money and um, basically anything I put into this is and, and my art as well, like my iPad and things like that are things I've um, saved up over time that haven't come out of our family life money. But anyways, um, I forget, keep it. How do I keep going? Um, so this is very good. Like, I like coming here and chatting about my project. Like, this is probably going to give me, like, a bit of a boost to, like, keep going with things. Um, I also think that I, like, promised I would do this, and I've been, like, posting every day. So I don't want to, like, be a rug project. So I put a little bit of pressure on myself to, like, keep going. Um, also, I feel like once you kind of um, – how do I put this? Uh, there's a point where – in any kind of project, even if like you're working on like a business or something where you kind of hit a critical mass and like you feel like things are finally getting going and it's all the work that was like leading up to it that kind of got you there. And then so it almost feels like everything is a little bit easier and like you, you kind of get into the flow state with your project or even with your art and things like that. So I feel like it was a bit of a battle to get here, but I feel like I'm kind of moving into more of a flow state where I'm not going to be doing as much um, like research and like thinking and contemplating. So I'm really excited for like that next um, flow part. Hey, hi, Ali. Um, I was taking notes this time, so I was just uh, listening and um, uh, and all the good questions <laughs> has been already asked by Espresso and Casper as usual. Um, I wanted to say that um, it's, it's I find it really uh, incredible how um, 
you're doing all this project basically um, on your on your own and um, also given that you're doing this um, as a side project um, and at the same time you're staying so consistent and as you said that um, just to um, be accountable to yourself it's just really amazing and I think this um, is uh, very inspi um, inspirational for lots of other people in this community um, I actually really like the I think your your PFP project is is really unique um, in the way that regarding your, your own style and um, and you said that before that you are trying to find um, a balance between your own artistic integrity and at the same time to um, to fulfill the demand of the market. Um, this is something actually we have been talking about in um, the Angels Wing Gallery recently, and it's um, it's very interesting. And um, yeah, I like that you actually approach this whole art um, project also from a business oriented approach. And you, you did a lot of market research um, and that's, um, I, th I think lots of artists, and I think is this actually fine as they, when they start out, they just put out some artwork and see how it goes. And, um, but I think to be really successful, I think your approach is really the way to go. Um, yeah, to, to run this basically as a business and stay accountable to yourself. Um, and at the same time, also doing market research to understand what people actually want. And oh yeah, there's one thing I wanted to say that you you said that before you um, you drew your characters um, like intentionally with not perfect lines. And I, I actually really like this, um, this, um, this approach because um, um, we, we actually had a discussion last time also in our Twitter space that it, it's actually not important to show perfect artwork. Um, I think what, what people actually want is they, they want to see emotions and they want to see something that they can relate to. Um, and this is, I think, what um, uh, basically um, convinces someone or a collector to buy your artwork is they, they want to see the emotion behind it. And um, so I, I think it's your, your, your approach is actually perfect, um, just um, being the way it is. And I wanted to ask you, because um, I, I looked at your characters and they are all very diverse. And um, I was wondering whether you kind of like identify yourself with these different characters um, or how, how you come up with these different stories, just as curious. <laughs> Thank you um, for all the wonderful things you said about me. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, I'm I'm just it's very validating to like come here and be like, oh, you guys are doing you're doing a good job. Where you know, I think a lot of us as artists, like we have, I probably have like a dark night of the soul like once a week. Where I'm like, I should just delete everything and like quit. And anyways, so it's very nice to hear. Um, so. Yes, you mentioned that the uh, characters are very diverse, um, and there's also little storylines um, that you've picked up on, which is uh, fun. So I'm, I actually um, also like, I mean, not I haven't been doing any writing lately, but um, I have in the past done a lot of like writing, so like writing short stories or writing little like novels that didn't really go anywhere. <laughs> Um, so I think part of that, too, was I wanted to add a little bit of writing into the PFPs. And um, some of the writing I kind of added after the fact, but some of it I kind of, some of the writing is actually kind of like what I felt or kind of came up with when I was actually drawing it, once I decided I was going to do that. Um, and then on diversity um, in the characters, so like I do identify um, as a queer person. I am uh, married to woman we got married in the pandemic that's a whole other story and um, the beginning of the pandemic before everything kind of shut down um but for me diversity and having diverse characters is really important um this is kind of a bit personal but i'm, I'm you know it's just a firefly chat um growing up um i have like four siblings and um my oldest sister who's technically my half sibling is um black or African Canadian or whatever words you want to use. Um, I am myself, I'm a white person. Um, but I could see growing up when I was younger, there were a lot of differences that I noticed between how she was getting treated and like how I was getting treated. Um, so like I would notice like people would be meaner to her, for example, or like there wouldn't necessarily be characters 
in a story who like looked like her but they would look like me so I was kind of curious about that growing up and like people would be like oh she's not your sister because she doesn't look like you so I think for me like I really try to have diverse characters um and diverse skin tones and diverse hair um because um I come from a diverse background and I do want to see people see themselves in the artwork or see their family in the artwork whatever that looks like to them yeah it's also just more fun um and like seeing the way different colors pop on like a darker skin tone I really love um, playing with contrast a lot as well. So I think that's something um, I try to consciously do in my work. But also, like, I mean, maybe not for the 100 Day Girl Collection. Um, I didn't sort of consciously be like, oh, this character has to be this skin color. Um, but it just kind of came out like that. But I guess it comes from, like, my diverse background. Oh, my gosh. You guys can't see this, but I'm basically waving my hands around a lot. So it's very funny over here to myself. <laughs> Nice. Thank you so much for sharing. That's uh, and um, I can imagine how that that experience is shaping the how you think about the art. So that's uh, yeah, really great to, that you open up and share about this. I think this is actually exactly why people buy certain kinds of artwork is that you are actually showing your own story in it, and it's just not like a piece of like a nice piece of art that you want to try and make money of but you are basically telling your whole story or your own story in your artwork. And this is, I think it's very nice. Thank you. Yeah, so um, we um, do have time for uh, a question or two more, uh, even though we, we try to aim at one hour and we're at the one hour mark. So we're gonna try not to, to spend too much of everyone's Sunday. Um, and we do also have a request from the audience you can add you as a speaker if you have a question okay well one more then let's see so yeah did you have a question for Ali yeah actually I have and uh, I was uh, I was about to say uh, that uh, first of all it's uh, you know uh, how can you do this in uh, such a like you know can I say so short period of time like I think it's it's uh, very like like hundred days. How how can you do this? By being very organized, I guess. Um, also, to give a bit of context, um, this kind of goes back to you, uh, who asked the who said earlier about like kind of what I talked about, like art to market, where I'm making art that people actually maybe might possibly hopefully want to buy. I think it's a lot. It's it's how to put this. Um, now that I know what I'm doing, I'm not as worried about doing it because I've had a lot of thought and um, done a lot of research kind of on the front end. And yes, 100 days is it's not a lot of time. Um, so I think basically it just, uh, I'm going to kind of go back to what I said before. Um, it comes down to organization and really trying to put in the time every day and then getting up to that point where you really see the momentum. So, like, to give a bit of background, um, I actually, this isn't my first foray into the NFT world. I actually made a project that nobody bought, and then I ended up deleting it all because I didn't do any research. Um, it wasn't even related to people. It wasn't anything I've ever done before. It was a little bit weird. I was trying to sell bricks online. Um, so, basically, I was doing, like, hand-drawn bricks, and I did that, like, basically every day for several hours a day. Um... I drew the, those like onto the bricks or whatever. Um, and then basically I kind of knew that, okay, well I did these all as like one of ones. And that took me about like 60 days of like a lot of work and time. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to be doing traits now, which is not one of ones. So that's going to take me less time. Um, I can probably do more traits per hour um, than I could do like, my old previous bricks so it's also about finding something I, I really struggle with as like a perfectionist is actually finding the time to do things so like I feel like sometimes we say think oh I have to have like a free afternoon to do my art I have to you know block off time to do this for like three straight hours and yes that would be ideal but sometimes I just draw like on my lunch break or from listening to like a spaces or 
I kind of try to find little pockets of time throughout the day where I'm not doing something and then do something related to the project, even if that's just like DMing Casper back on Twitter after uh, ghosting <laughs> the gallery for like two weeks. So, yeah. don't worry, nothing personal. I didn't take it personally. Finding the time or making the time and like always having this as like, okay, I'm not doing anything right now. What could I be doing? Well, that that's really interesting. But you know, that just for me, it's like it's very hard to be <laughs> honestly to be such you know motivated for uh, 100 days because you said that you're like doing it every day for several hours and uh, like are you you know are you like this as a person I mean oh, you know the person who can work like every day for several hours for you know just for me it's uh, it's hard to imagine like being so concentrated so motivated for uh, 100 days like probably like Tell about yourself as a person. Yeah, so I, I am a type A person. Um, I am a little bit crazy. Um, <laughs> I'll say crazy in like air quotes, but like I think part of it too. Yes, you are hitting on something. Like this is a this. Is, some of this is just like my personality and who I am as a person. Like I do. I've also done like challenges in the past where I've had to do something for like thirty or seventy five days for different things so it is it is a natural extension of me to do something like this maybe not natural but it is like an extension of like things i've done before even if it's not necessarily art related um but for somebody else kind of coming at this and you're like oh you know i don't have several hours a day to spend doing this or i don't that's not just you know i have a life like this isn't what i want to do 24 7 and things like that it, it can be about where do you want to start something like for example like with the 100 girls like I think if you want to start something, you could start a PFP collection that, or like, um, sorry, a one of one collection where maybe you aren't spending a ton of time uh, doing something every day, but you're doing a little bit. And then maybe after a couple of weeks, you have three or four drawings that you want to launch. Um, I've seen some artists such as, um, I think her name is Lisa Chow. She's the one doing the design for um, Hug XYZ, like their PFP. And she just released a little collection of three one of ones and they were um, they were animated. So like she did spend a good amount of time, but I knew that she'd been working on those for a few months. So it wasn't something that she kind of like, and she's very busy. She has a lot going on with like her personal home life and everything like that. So I do think having a goal is good um, and having a goal that works for you is the most important. So like, yes, having a hundred days is not going to be accessible for everybody but maybe doing one animated NFT or three NFTs in a month might be more doable for someone else. But it's all about kind of challenging yourself in a way that doesn't feel like you're under the gun. So for me, this is like, I'm putting a little bit of pressure on myself, It's it's, but I also find it fun. So I wouldn't want anyone to, I say like, don't blow up your life. Don't um, take on too much where you just kind of, go a little too hectic um that's kind of my advice so really start what's how can you start today with the smallest little promise to yourself in your artwork um and then build it up over time thank you thank you ali for answering it was really interesting to listen to you i i i heard what i uh like wanted the answers and uh, nice. I, I think i should yeah like go back to the listeners because <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm out of questions and thank you so much. And I wish you luck in what you're doing. It's it's really cool. Uh, and um, good luck. Thank you. That was a very good question. Um, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for those questions. And um, we are going to, to round it up at this point, unless there's any other final questions. But I think you were... were uh, bit over an hour and, and it's been a great um, chat with you, Ali. Thank you so much for coming on and, and sharing about your project and and uh, everything we've, we've uh, been through this. Yeah, this is going to be great also as a recording for people who for some reasons were not able to join. We we keep trying to find good time slots, but uh, with time zones, it's, uh, it's uh, impossible, right? So um, I know people have said they want to listen to the recording as well, so that would be great. Just wanted to add that uh, we do have 
additional artists joining the Angels Wing Gallery as we speak. Um, so uh, we will be following up with with more chats with artists, um, and we have these weekly spaces, so uh, be on the lookout for those. And um, we announce on, on Twitter everyone who's joining the gallery. And so yeah, I just wanted to to plug that uh, before we um, log off here. So I think that's it for today. Thank you so much, Ali, and uh, my lovely co-hosts, Casper and June. Thank you yeah, I just want to say a word of thanks as well to uh, Ali. Very inspirational uh, discussion. And thanks for sharing some of your personal stories. I really like that. And thank you so much to all the listeners. Uh, we're really glad you could spend your Sunday with us. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, we do, do hope this uh, little collective of ours keeps growing and uh, hope that you will support us. And please support Ali as well. She's, she's uh, having her a 1-1 one, one collection on sale right now do check it out it's on the pinned tweet uh, do give her your support and uh, watch her on this journey um, anything else from Yun? yeah thank you everyone for joining and um, I think we need to have Ellie once again on the show when she is ready to um, launch her 10k project <laughs> I'm really I excited for sure you. yeah for sure okay thank you everyone have a great thank Sunday yeah. bye bye, bye.